Hello everybody. Today we're going to talk about um, starting jobs via PowerShell. This actually isn't that hard, but it doesn't follow the same the same exact convention as uh, doing other things because SMO is kind of weird. You know, it doesn't have a unified syntax, but you know, T-SQL doesn't either. So there you go. So this one's weird enough that I actually decided to uh, go ahead and make a video for you. So I'm starting here in uh, SQL PS, so I just right clicked on jobs and opened it up here, and here I am at SQL PS in the job tree. You can see that, right? So now I can pull a list of jobs, and all I've got here in my jobs is uh, um, one of the, the sys policy purge history, right? So um, there's really not much to do here, but it'll, it'll meet our purpose. So let's say that we want to start this job. You would think Okay, now there are two ways to do this, okay? Um, you can say GCI, um, and for this one we'll, we only have one, right? So I'm, I'm going to remove the qualifier. I just point that and say percent there. And so the percent is the for each, right? I'm going to say here dot start. So what I'm telling it is for every single iteration of this, right, I want to start. Okay. So for basically what this, <laughs> this is funny, what this is going to do is it's going to start every job in SQL Agent, which we don't want to do. We would want to limit it, right? But that's a, a different video. Maybe I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Maybe I won't. So there we go. I started the job. Pretty easy, right? Let's say you want to start a specific job. Now, I could limit that up here, um, or I could put in a where clause right here. But the easiest way to do that is to use uh, a commandlet called get item. So if I get item, now I just pass it the name of the job, right? So it's going to be, uh, what did I say it was? Sys policy, not plus, but underscore. No. <clears throat> Watch what happens when I do this. Bam. It fails, right? I expected this because I told you it wasn't, it, it didn't happen the, the way it normally does, right? <clears throat> but let's look and see what happens. The number of keys are required are name dot category ID. So evidently, just passing the name for get item here isn't good enough. Now get item usually is, right? So you can say get item C colon or get item a folder and you can and that'll be just fine. But here in SMO evidently that's not good enough. So uh, what I have to do is I have to find out the category ID. So if I get the category ID here that's pretty easy and I'll just say uh, format table Category ID, and there we go. So I see I've got syspolicy blah, blah, sys policy purge history with a category ID of zero. Um, how do I find out what it is? Because it may not be called category ID, right? So I can just say, I can just pull that, pipe it to get member, and I can see all the properties here. And one of the properties here should be category ID. There it is, right there. So category ID. And if you want to see what they all what the name of that category is so I can say GCI pipe that to format table name comma category category ID let's go ahead and do an auto size on that there we go so it's uncategorized right so evidently you can have um, the same job name in different categories the same way as you can have different tables the the same table name in different schemas right so we have to special we have to uh, sp blah, blah, blah. we have to specify our category ID so when I do this again I'm gonna say get item uh, what was the name of that again <laughs> oh here it is it's policy if I could hit an underscore purge dot zero because it wants the ID right good so now I've set that right and all it did was return the name so how do I call this how do I actually do the start job well 
to do it this way, there are actually two ways again. I can surround this in parentheses. There we go. And surrounding that in parentheses actually does the same thing that this did above. It actually executes this code inside. So what it's going to do is it's going to uh, it's going to run this inside. And it's going to actually set the working item to sys policy purge history with a category ID of zero. And now I can call the method like that. Okay, so the parentheses and PowerShell means execute this code as it is and then give me the result of that. So you can pull properties off of that and you can call methods off of that. So it just started the job and returned as soon as it, as soon as it started. Now there's another way you can do this, um, which is about the same thing. So if I take this away and go home and take that away, I can say a equals. So now I'm setting um, I'm setting a to an instance of this get item sys policy purge history dot zero, right? And you still have to use the dot zero here. If I don't use the dot zero, it should bomb. There we go. And again, it says here, the number of keys specified does not match the number of keys required to address this object. It says the number of keys required are name dot category ID. So if I come here, add my zero back, right? So I can, I can, uh, um, set it to an instance of a variable, which can be handy sometimes. Now I just have to say a dot start, right? Easy enough. And it started. There we go. Now you can do this on remote systems too. Oh, wait a minute. One more thing. Um, as I'm doing this, I can start it with a specific step. And this, this works in the other way too, right? All I have to do is in quotes, just put the name of the step <clears throat> and it'll start at that step. It has to be the name of the step. So, you know, that's one of the reasons why I don't like steps that are, step names that are, you know, 70 characters long, right? So keep your step name simple, but put it in quotes and you'll be fine. Um, now you can also do this with against a remote system <clears throat> and oddly enough, it doesn't change at all, right? Um, so let's say if I say here, and let's see if I can do this. Uh, see if I can access this remote box. There we go. Switch to the job server. Good switch to jobs. <clears throat> now I can do this all in one step, right? I'm just showing you how to how to walk through it, but I could have easily, you know, said cd uh, backslash and then cd sql sql con default uh, job server jobs and then just been here all in one step, right? Just like you would just like you would do at the file system, right? But I'm just showing you how to step through it. So now if I do a GCI or a directory, right? I can get a list of jobs. So let's go ahead and start uh, uh, the full backup system DB's job. That's a that's a good user job. <clears throat> now I know nothing about this, so what I'm going to have to do is go name category category ID. Let's go ahead and auto size that. Good. So, because you got to know what the category ID is first, right? Full system backups is category zero. There you go. So if I come here now and say, actually, yeah, I'll go ahead and do it from scratch. I like this method, so I'm going to say get item full system DBs dot zero dot start.
and there we go it just started that job I don't think it's gonna run very long but let's see if we can actually see it running and there it is it's executing right there I see so not too bad huh so there you go those are the ins and outs of starting jobs both locally and remotely through PowerShell <clears throat> now Typically, when you start jobs remotely, you have to go to something stupid like, you know, a linked server and then call SP start job or something like that, right? No, no, no. This is, this is far easier code. Look at the code I wrote to do that. It's so much easier, and you don't have to mess with the linked server mess, and, or you don't have to mess with the uh, dynamic SQL of any kind. This is a much cleaner method to do this and you've got a lot more control. Anyway, I uh, hope this helps. Take care.